What are you going to do if we lose all cell phone communication and all power and have no way to communicate with each other? Well, today I have a solution and it's from Meshtastic and it's really simple and cheap and a great way to communicate with other people if you're in an emergency situation. So let's first talk about what this is. Meshtastic is a radio system built on the LoRa network. And what that means is it uses two little computers to talk between the two little computers. And they can be up to, you know, 10, 20, 30 miles apart. And you connect to those little computers with your phone uh, via Bluetooth so you can send messages back and forth and have group chats and channels, all that kind of stuff. Now, this does not rely on the cell network or Wi-Fi or anything on your phone. It just uses your phone to connect Bluetooth to the radio so you can type out messages because it doesn't have a keypad or display or anything for the most part. So you can use it if the grid goes down. For example, when we lost Verizon a few months ago here in Southern California and across the whole nation for that matter, we were able to use these mesh-tastic radios to communicate between myself, my family, and friends just in case. So let's get started in putting together this Meshtastic radio. If you need any of these items, they will be down below in the description uh, so you can order them and rewatch this video and follow along to get started in this journey. So to get started here, we have this Meshtastic radio. Uh, we ordered this online, it's based on a whiz block or something like that is what it's called, and it comes with a power adapter, the whiz block, a couple of antennas, and we'll go through them now. This is the actual radio itself. Pretty small, has a USB connection and a couple of spots here where you can plug in the Bluetooth antenna and the lower antenna. It also has a couple of buttons that you use, this USB-C to power it uh, and to program it. Also, we have one of the two antennas here, the LoRa antenna for one, which is the radio antenna, as well as the Bluetooth antenna that we will connect to the radio with. Also here, it does come with a USB to USB-C cable, which is useful for programming it. And then I ordered a solar panel, which came separately, that we will wire up to power it. You will need these power kit pigtails to connect your solar panel uh, to the uh, adapter. And then you also need a separate battery, which are linked below, uh, to uh, hold that solar energy during the night. I also ordered a separate 9 dB external antenna that I will use uh, to get longer range and then I put all of it in this box here or enclosure that's watertight uh, to make sure that uh, I can leave it outside and get good range. I also needed some soldering supplies, so rosin solder, that kind of thing. And then I did need some heat shrink to be able to cover some of these soldered connections, which I have here. Uh, in order to uh, shrink that heat shrink, you do need a heat gun. And so to get started, I'm going to go ahead and take one of the pigtails that uh, is used for the solar panel. On the actual whiz block, it does say solar battery, so you can know which one. And then I'm going to basically snip the wires on each end of the pigtail, as well as the solar panel, uh, to make sure that I can get a good solder on. In this case, I just make sure to strip off, uh, I don't know, about half an inch. I know that's a lot, but it'll make sense in a little bit. Also, after you do this, I made this mistake, make sure you put your heat shrink tubing on before you try and solder. Very important, made that mistake like five times. So make sure you do that, it'll save a lot of trouble in the future. Do both sides, and then we'll be ready to proceed with soldering. I will, uh, to get started here, after I get the heat shrink on, I will go ahead and spread out the wires to make sure it's easier to get it together uh, in the soldering process. Then I'll get my solder, my rosin, my soldering iron heating up. Then I'll go ahead and dip that flayed out, you know, end of wire in the rosin to make sure to get a lot of rosin or a flux on that wire. And then as they're spread out, you can kind of join them together and just twist them together, kind of. That's I'm not a professional solderer, but uh, this method seemed to work really well for me. Um, and then, as you can see, I forgot, so I had to redo it. But I also got the sweet block um, that I really helped for soldering. It'll be down below as well. And that really holds the wire, so I didn't have to have like three hands to be able to solder it down. Uh, and then I used my soldering iron after it was nice and hot to heat up that joint and then put the solder on that joint. And then I'll do it again for the other black wire. After that's done, we go ahead and pull it off the uh, soldering block there. We slide the heat shrink tubing over it, and we'll use that uh, heat shrink gun, or that heat gun, to go ahead and shrink that tubing down. After that, we can go ahead and connect the solar pin. Now, they're different sizes, the solar and the battery pin on there. That's why you need to make sure, um, but they are labeled correctly. So, 
we'll go ahead and connect the uh, solar into the solar one and the battery into the battery plug. Now, if you have juice in your battery, this will turn it on, so just beware. Also, we do need the two antennas here. This is the Bluetooth antenna. It will be labeled on that block there on the one corner uh, as Bluetooth or uh, I believe it's like BLTE or something to that effect. And it takes some finagling to get it in. Then you will need uh, the actual other piece of the antenna. We're just gonna use the pigtail for now and you'll see why in a second we'll connect that up to the board. And as you can see, uh, once we get everything together, you'll be able to easily screw on that antenna. But for now, we'll take our uh, box out and we'll go ahead and measure it to see where we wanna put the antenna. This is where the pigtail is gonna go out and where we can uh, screw the, pig the antenna on. After we drill a hole in the garage, we can slide that pigtail through, put a nut on there and uh, cinch it down nice and tight. Then we can screw on our antenna and in this case, it's gonna be sitting flat, so we'll turn it upright like that. After that's done, we'll go ahead and remove the kind of base plate that's in there. Um, I also just drilled another hole and I slid the solar panel um, wires through that other hole that's on the bottom. Uh, and you can eventually do what I did, which was fill it either with epoxy or hot glue to make it kind of watertight. Uh, it'll take some finagling to get this down in there, but that's important, that little rack, because it'll keep water if there is some in there uh, below all the electronics. And then I'll go ahead and connect the solar panel once again to the block, as well as connect the battery in this case. And you will see the lights start coming on after you do that. Uh, and then just make sure that all of the connectors are on there nice and tight, including that antenna connection. And that, that's basically all there is to it other than making everything look nice inside. I did end up using some hot glue to kind of hot glue that solar panel to the top of that case uh, just to make sure it didn't move. So we'll move over to our computer here. Uh, we did use a few different websites here. This is the flash.mestastic.org. Uh, I believe that I'll put that down below. You select your board type on the left, which is the whiz block that I used. Uh, you select if you want a stable or a beta version, and then you click flash on the top, on the, the right hand side there. It'll come up with an error message and it'll walk you through all of the steps. In this case with the whiz block, it's really easy to enter DFU mode is what they call it, or a flashing mode. All you have to do is really click the button and it brings up the, uh, the drive basically, or the memory that's on your whiz block there. You can see I'll pull it to the side so you can see both here in a second. Now, after you clicked flash, what it also did uh, is it opened up that screen there and you can download the actual software for your whiz block. You can see here I found it in my downloads window and all you have to do, it's super simple, is just copy and paste it to that drive that opened up onto your whiz block. After it pastes on, yes, it will take a while. I understand such a small file still takes a while, um, but once it does that, it'll actually shut down and restart the whiz block and it'll be up and running and ready to configure. It's super simple. But after that, all you gotta do is go over to the next site I'll put down here below. To get started here, to get started here, we'll go to client.meshtastic.org. In this case, we'll use the serial connection because it's a USB-based connection. We'll select the device in the list and then select the device in the list again, and we are connected. It's not a fast connection, so just be aware of that. So we'll go ahead and go to config for the first part here, and we'll start to look through our options here uh, in the configuration. The WizBlock does not I believe have GPS, it might, I, I'm honestly not positive. But there are a lot of settings in here if you wanna go through and, and uh, look at it, including this power save setting that can be useful, um, but you can browse through here as needed. A um, Couple of the big things that you do need to select is your region. If you're in the US, you need to make sure to select US. You can also go up there and click the uh, icon, the writing icon, and select and change the name of your device which can be very helpful. And then if you go down to radio config, LoRa and radio settings, you can select from one of the different options in terms of radio config, long, fast, short, um, all of that. I don't understand it completely, but if you are interested, you can look it up uh, at the link below and uh, learn more about that setup. After that is all done, all you have to do is uh, unplug your USB cable and restart your device per the instructions in your uh, whiz block itself. It's usually just pulling the power and putting it back in or you can click the reset button once. 
After that's back up, it is super simple to use uh, of an application. Um, all you do is set that out. In this case, I had the solar panel that will recharge the battery during the day and if it's cloudy, and uh, that way I can have connection at all times. It will stay outside at all times and I can get Bluetooth connection to that, so it's no big deal. You can also have multiple and select kind of like a router functionality and have one inside as well. So let's go ahead and open up the app and see how it goes. It'll first start connecting to uh, your radio. In this case, uh, I have my radio here set up. It's gonna go communicating with device, especially if you're already connected. Uh, if not, then you're gonna have to enter the pin, which I believe is one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, to connect Bluetooth to the device the first time. Um, but look in your instructions for that just to make sure. So uh, after it is connected, if it does, it will uh, come up as connected and say subscribed to mesh. It's pretty much that simple. Now you can do a couple of different things. You can go over to messages and you can see here it will have channels listed, which you can set up in the app here, or it'll be a little bit easier on your uh, computer. And uh, we can go through that in a different video. But the big thing is direct messages as well. If you click that, it'll list all of the Mesh-tastic radios or nodes is what they call them in your local area that you can connect to or are within a few hops, which is like it hops between radios to get longer distances. And all you would have to do is, you know, click one, for example, and then you can start typing a message to them and it will get sent to them. Uh, the other thing in here is you have uh, option in the middle is nodes. And as you can see here, this will list all of the nodes, it lists all the battery levels, uh, depending on if they allow it, their location, signal strength, if you're connected directly to the radio, or if they're hops away, you know, it'll say hops away and then list a number. Um, so that's pretty interesting. I have 162 nodes in this case, which is pretty amazing. And then you can click on mesh map. Well, this is super cool. You can see here that basically I have it lit up to three hops away. So it'll connect to up to three hops, which gets me all the way from Apple Valley to, where is this, down by Gardena, all the way out to like Simi Valley, um, out in the mountains by Ojai, um, all the way up to almost Mojave, um, pretty far away. I have seen it. Oh, and I do have one down in San Diego, which is, pretty incredible. So it can let go for a long distance. The other option here is settings. And in here, um, you can go through and change a lot of the same settings that you had on your GUI, right? So if you need to change the region, if you need to add channels, that kind of stuff, it's all listed in this settings function. So um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, all you really got to do to get this up and running and to be completely useful and set up as an emergency backup is to have multiple of these. So in this case, uh, this one is going to our in-laws. We have one at our house and then I'm going to have one in my car. Uh, so if I'm at work and, and cell connections go down, we can communicate back and forth to each other and send messages. We also can are setting up a group with a group of us guys. So in case something does happen, we can always communicate to each other, uh, even if cell phones are down. You really, you can operate this plugged in directly with USB, or you can just use a battery function and just change out the batteries. I chose to do more of a permanent setup where I can just leave it go outside and have the solar panel connected and charging the battery during the day and using the battery at night. It has a built-in solar um, configuration device inside, so it'll automatically charge from the solar panel during the day and use the battery at night. It's a pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple system that is a great backup for emergency communications. Like I said, this was used in some of the hurricanes that happened in Florida uh, because people were able to send messages back and forth even though cell networks were down, internet was down, all of that. So this is a, a very useful system. Uh, if things go down, if you know stuff hits the fan or if cell networks go down for whatever reason like they did a few months ago, I highly recommend getting this set up. If you have any questions or want to know more about some of the functionality or the settings involved in this, please let me know in the description below. Or if you need any of the items that I talked about today, you can check the links out down there as well. Otherwise, uh, we appreciate you guys joining us today and uh, we'll talk to you soon.